Hey there, I want to showcase the new things that are coming to stagetimer.io with version 2. Now version 2 is like a major redesign of the controller page. Here, this is the old, the current version of the controller page. And what you see is that you have the timer window at the left, we have the um, timer agenda items in the center and then the messages to the right. But what um, jumps out is that there's a lot of visual noise here. There's a lot of borders, a lot of lines and, and icons and text. And uh, it really is so because we started simple and then with requests and with ideas from your side, um, we added more useful features. Now, we had a lot of, lot of emails and a lot of design iterations um, to make this much, much better and much, much more usable. And this is the version two of Stage Timer. It really tries to, to simplify this whole interface, to simplify um, like reading it, seeing what's going on right now. And I think we succeeded quite well. And I want to just guide you a little bit through these, these uh, changes that we did. So first of all, we have the transport controls to the left. So in the old version, when you start a timer, um, it shows you a few controls down here. One is the, the current time, one is the finish, expected finish time of day. Um, and then you have these controls like adding a minute, uh, subtracting a minute. Now in the new version, you have this to the left here. So I can start this timer that was, and you can see it is like highlighted in blue. And when, once I start it, it turns red, showing that it's, it's running. Um, and then I can advance to the next timer and advance and um, kind of works like a video player, right? And I can uh, reset it and then go back. And here also I have these controls to add a minute or add like 30 seconds or subtract a minute. So this gives it a really nice like central place. Um, also shows you when uh, the time started. So if I click here, it shows me I started this, uh, this time, this uh, countdown at this time, uh, and it will finish at 4.53. Uh, uh, currently it's 4.48. The most changes really happened in this uh, re uh, region here with the timers. As you can see, it's much easier already to see uh, like the, the individual information that is um, visible here. We have the start time, we have the duration, and then the, the title plus uh, the speaker or the talent that is that is uh, um, leading it. And um, you can see that it, it slowly has this like fading animation here to show how far advanced we are in this timer as it is running. And each of these elements uh, can be uh, set individually. So uh, to showcase it, let me really like open a brand new timer and just show you all these, these options. Let's create a new one. Currently it's like this, just one. And um, here what I can do is I can set a start time. For example, I want my event to happen at 8 p.m. So this time will not do anything. Uh, it will not start the timer automatically. For this, I would have to uh, switch it to scheduled then it actually does start automatically at 8 p.m. Uh, but I just want to have it like as a display, as, 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 a, as a feedback for me to know when, it, when it's happening. The good thing is Stage Timer automatically understands this and um, builds up my event here. So uh, it understands that this first timer takes 10 minutes. So the next time will start at 8.10. It's, it's a grayed out number, meaning it's, it's not a number you have inputted but it's a number that is automatically calculated how it's going. Let's move this ahead so you can see. And this works, right? I can reorder them and it will automatically update these start times. So it's really handy. And if I add uh, change the duration, for example, 30 minutes here, it, will, it, it does do that quite well. Now this becomes really useful if I, for example, have an event that, that runs late, right? Currently it's um, 4.50 in my local time, 4.50 p.m. So let's say this if, um, this a particular event here started at 4, um, 4.45. So I start this timer, it's 4.45, uh, it's a.m. but it's the wrong time, let me just change it to p.m. Uh, 4.45 p.m. Um, I will start it and now the timer recognizes one moment, currently it's actually 4.51, right? But you wanted this uh, time to start at 4.45. So your time is actually six minutes late. It shows me here, this time is six minutes late. Now, what I can do about it is, of course, I can maybe deduct some minutes here. So let's say this, this element here, it has to happen at 5.25. So let me just 
lock in the number, uh, 5.25 p.m. This is when, um, you know, what? let's call this, uh, I don't know, the break, ah, maybe break is a bad example, let's call it the keynote. The keynote has to happen at 5.25, 30 minutes long, so that's important. Now, I, I know if I just run the show as it currently is, it will actually start six minutes late, but maybe I can deduct from this, I don't know, introduction, um, Section of panel panelists. I can deduct um, six minutes. So let me just take away instead of thirty. Maybe we, we are running uh, at twenty four only. Um, and now my um, timer understands. Wait, this one actually like stops, and then there's like a six minute gap, gap uh, a six minute gap or break. And then only the next time I start. So it, it tells me there's a break of six minutes. But because my event is already running over time, it says, well, I'm just using these six minutes to compensate for the delay that is happening, meaning my really important keynote event maybe only starts 30, 30 seconds late. Or if I can you know, wiggle out a few more seconds here, um, or maybe can, I can just deduct uh, 30 seconds from the current running time, then it will actually happen uh, start in time. It's really, really, really helpful. So this is uh, like a, a visual aid to help you, um, you know, like uh, stay in the event flow and, and, and kind of deal with delays that happen during the event. So really helpful. I'm kind, kind of proud of this feature. I hope it, it, it's useful here. Um, okay, let's stop this again and um, let's remove this set time and this break. Another thing you can do here is link them together, right? Uh, let's say I want to just them um, like to start automatically. Just to, the, the show should run. I don't want to have anything to do with it. I can go to actions and just link all the timers together. Now they're all linked. Um, if this timer reaches the end, it will just automatically start the next element and so on and so forth. If I have a link timer here, maybe I want this one this introduction, right? Maybe something different, and I want it to run exactly until um, let's run until 6 p.m. So let's say this event here, uh, this place, it should run always until 6 a.m. Uh, p.m. So I will change the type to until and put 6 p.m. here. Um, so now once it reaches this next one, uh, the time will automatically calculate how long this uh, element is so to make sure that the next one always starts at 6 p.m. or this one finishes at 6 p.m. Um, and then thus not having any delay anymore. So, and, and previously it was not possible like to link timers and have this finish time right now. And now this is, this is all possible. Um, another thing that you can do is to change what is happening on the timer side uh, dynamically, right? For example, maybe I have kind of like a, a pre-show that is just the live stream. Let me just uh, make this normal again. I don't have too many stuff. Uh, Twenty-four minutes. Let's say, like, let's say we have a, a pre-show. The pre-show is um, thirty minutes. The live stream is already running, um, but but nothing is happening yet, right? And instead of having a countdown, I just want to show a, a clock. So I, I select time of day here in this drop-down, and while this pre-show is running, I just see the clock here. Um, but then, one uh, as soon as I come to this first element, which is the um, introduction. Um, then I see the countdown timer. And maybe for some reason for this uh, fourth event, I just want to have a count up. I can set this here. And once I reach here, it will actually count up here in the timer. Or I can combine them. I can say I want to have a count up and a time of day at the same time. And maybe um, for this last event, the time is not important at all. Uh, I can just hide it away and can just use my uh, message feature. Um, for you know, whatever reason it, it's necessary. So you can do this now, individually set these different appearances. Um, one additional uh, option I have here is adding some notes. For example, during this introduction, I want to play a video, I want to make sure I don't forget it. So I write down video, um, video one, right? So this shows up for me as a, as a little note, but the speaker does not see um, this information. Now we do have uh, this agenda view here, which I'm going to open real quick. And in the agenda view, um, 
you, you kind of you don't see the timer you see more like what is going on in the show right now here it's really helpful because this node doesn't show up but what if you want this node to show up right you you want to give this link to people at the backstage you know so they can kind of follow along but they need to know certain information that are contained in these nodes well no problem you can uh, select this notes um, checkbox here you can see that it changes the link slightly by adding this parameter um, i can copy this link again i send it to my uh, other screen and now my um, my node shows up to the people that open this link so now you can differentiate this link between people from the outside and, and, and people that are part of your staff and need to see these things. That's really helpful. Um, yeah, these options are available when you click um, on like the start time. As you can see, I, I try to keep um, interactive elements away from this from the screen. So it's, it's really easy and, and kind of looks like a Excel sheet, right? A Google sheet. But you can click on these and define these uh, the individual parameters here, like appearance, type, duration, or here you can change title, speaker, and notes. Now there is still these uh, this options pop up. The options pop up has the very same um, interactive elements plus the wrap up times. Now, the wrap up times define when your timer turns yellow and when it turns red. Now to showcase that, let me just make one time like really, really short, like this first one. Let me unlink them, unlink all of them, or like this fourth one. Let me just make this very, very short, like um, 15 seconds only. And then I will set the yellow to, let's say after uh, 10 seconds, and then uh, like the last 10 seconds, and then the last five seconds, it should be red. So now it's a very nice uh, visual thing here and uh, what I can do is I can play sounds and let it flash depending on where it is in in these in these wrap up times so let me change this to a countdown so <clears throat> for example I want uh, this timer let me reset it so I can edit uh, I want this timer to flash one time when it hits yellow and then I want it to flash another time like two times when it hits red and then once it's like it hits zero right and goes in overtime i just want it to flash continuously so let's go to to endless here and to like drive the message home even more i'm gonna add a, a little ding which i can preview so let's add this thing here and confirm now when i start it should um once it hits this place here it should, it should flash exactly and then when when once it hits uh, red it will flash uh, two times here we go and then there will be a little ding when it hits zero. And it like flashes continuously to let your talent know, hey, time is up, um, like no more talking. Sometimes it can be a bit confusing that it's still counting and, and people look at it with a glance, you know, and they see, oh, it's still counting, it must be fine. Um, so what you can change is, is you can go to settings here and just say, when hitting zero, stop counting. And then it just stays at zero. So even at a glance, like, you know, it's flashing, it's zero. So people should know, um, you know, time's up. And if I want to really drive the message home, I can say time's up. And of course, white is not enough. So let's make it red. Let's make it bold. Let's make it uppercase. Let's tell the person it's time to stop talking. So these are really most of the changes. Um, in the interface, you can see that, let me go to another timer or reset this. Um, in the interface, you can also see that there is this overall timeline that's similar to the agenda one here. Uh, it shows you, for example, that right now in our event, it's running, um, 54 minutes have passed and 40 minutes are still to go. And we are kind of like, you know, in this, in this region. Um, and another thing that we added is we modified the agenda page just slightly um, before when you share the agenda page, let me do this real quick with the old or current version. Um, there's this pop out, uh, this the sidebar that you can open. If I click to message on messages, I I, sh I see like the timer and I see um, the uh, the messages I can show, and, and this like just enables people to use this feature without like messing with the time. Um, but maybe you want to share this link with people outside, and they should not be able to control anything here. So in the new agenda link, this is not there anymore, right? It's just 
just the agenda. There's no, no you can control nothing. Yeah, we can only do it full screen. Uh, that that's it. But we have a new link, which is the moderator link, and it comes just by default with the timer, and it comes with a message, and gives the person that has this link uh, the option to like show some messages on screen, which might be nice if you have a, a um, audience question, for example. That is spelled completely wrong, but you know you get the point that you want to show to the speaker and you have like two different pers people doing that. Um, so you can just give this link to somebody who takes care of these, of these texts while you can take care um, of the actual elements and nobody can mess with, with the show. Well, that's it for, for this demonstration. Um, I hope it was really understandable. And um, I really hope that these things that we changed, really like listening to your feedback, getting all your emails, really uh, thanking you a lot for that. And also thanks to all the people that helped us um, test it. We sent it out to a few users ahead of time and uh, they really gave us good feedback, what, what can be improved here. And um, we hope that this will make your show even better. Um, and whatever you do, you know, we, we know people that, that use this app in, um, in uh, TV shows. We know that uh, people use it in uh, the educational field and um, some use it for corporate events or even like just team meetings. So whatever you do, I hope you can do it even better with a stage timer version 2. See you then.